Hi, welcome to this class on how land use decisions are made. This class is an introductory class to how land use decisions are done and performed in the local planning processes of the Philippines. In the map you see are, is the general land use plan that we uh, completed for the municipality of Tiwi in the province of Albay in 2018. This land use map contains the results of various workshops, consultations, and field-based activities. So, the determinants of land use decisions. At the end of this class, the student will be able to justify existing land use decisions that they observe or that you observe in uh, all around you. So, as an introduction, Tiwi is a first class municipality in Albay and is known for its tourism activities and its various facilitation uh, facilities for tourism. So, the Tiwi Tourism Master Plan markets the municipality as an investment opportunity in the uh, field of tourism. So these are this is one of our sessions in the process of completing the comprehensive land use plan of the municipality of Tiwi. So included in this uh, consultation session is the our members of the local government unit, including the mayor, the geothermal corporation in Tiwi that is a uh, large stakeholder because they occupy almost 50% of the land area of the municipality and us consultants coming from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. The main uh, purpose of the uh, comprehensive land use plan is the main result of the comprehensive land use plan is that the expansion of the uh, current commercial uh, central business district in Barangay Tigbi encircled in this map is to be directed to the west because of projected effects of sea level rise. So how are land use decisions made? This whole class is uh, on the uh, is, uh, um, this whole class is anchored on this figure by uh, Professor Ernesto Cerote in his 2004 book that shows that interrelations between physical factors, social factors, economic factors, the character and the characteristics and motives of stakeholders in resulting land use decisions. So have you seen this diagram already? So we will uh, begin with the physical factors which are uh, influential to the three factors, three other factors, namely the social factors, the economic factors, and the characteristics of and motives of stakeholders. So these are the, this is an overview of the physical factors that are considered when making land use decisions. Primarily, land use planners consider slope, elevation, and soil characteristics in the land that they are planning. So a concept that is important to note in land use decision making is land suitability. The uh, revised forestry code of PD 507 uh, inculcates, encapsulates the uh, land suitability matrix that is presented here. So for urban agricult and agricultural uh, uses, 
these are the criteria and once elevation is above 1000 meters protection forest land uses are uh, used so how do they how do planners uh, make land use decisions based on physical conditions one way is through sieve mapping and suitability analysis various thematic maps are made into aspect maps focusing on one particular uh, category of interest and these are overlaid to result into a land suitability map for a particular land use so this is an example that we did in the municipality of Bakake Albay where the forest built up and agriculture areas were identified and delineated based on the very and validated based on slope soil and elevation categories so one of the physical factors that uh, professor ernesto cerote did not emphasize is that of climate change and climate hazards and this is an important consideration in the municipality of Bakakai. so if you will see here that the um, municipality the uh, Tigbi which is the commercial central business district of the municipality is projected to be affected by sea level rise so in the national scale sea level rise is projected to rise sea level by is projected to rise by 20 centimeters by 2030 also like many uh, municipalities in albay and in region 5 uh, Tiwi is a multi, uh, affected by multi, multiple hazards, namely flood prone areas in the east, also sea level rise affected areas in the east, storm surge areas in the coasts, landslide prone areas in the ancestral domain in the mountains, and other uh, man made hazards like. Ah, sorry, uh, fault lines in the middle of the uh, municipality. So can you give, think of examples of how these physical features listed below can affect land use decisions? So next is economic factors. As you can see, economic factors are affected by physical factors so some of the economic determinants of land use decisions that professor serote listed are can be categorized into benefits and costs of course land use decisions are made to make money or to save money as well as to use land to its uh, potential or to as, at least to the benefit of the uh, operator and the relative location of land is important because of its implications or benefits to other land uses that are adjacent or far from it for example if you get an agricultural area near an urban area there is a possibility that dot, that agricultural area would become an urban land area also that's why it's an economic consideration also so costs uh, of uh, land use decisions include direct capital and labor outlays for uh, making land usable recurrent costs which may include property taxes as we know different property taxes are applicable to 
real property and also commercial property uh, residential property and commercial property and as well there is a concept that uh, professor Cerote uh, ex states which is the ripening cost which is a big factor in our land use decisions especially for agricultural land so ripening cost is the cost increase in the cost of holding property in its present state when it's already fit for higher use an example being that agricultural land in the view of a farmer or a capitalist is already fit for uh, a subdivision or commercial developments which would be more beneficial in terms of money and in terms of uh, future development but this ripening cost again is uh, dependent on the another uh, factor which is the uh, characteristics and motives of the stakeholders which we will discuss later on so an example in uh, this is Tigby because of the uh, purpose of the land one of the purposes of the land use plan is to uh, move the municipal center or the central business district of the municipality away from the sea level rise affected areas towards the west we have to understand how or we need to assess the current uh, economic conditions or considerations of the different uh, of the adjacent municipalities particularly here barangay oyama which is the uh, considered as the most possible most probable uh, new municipal center so as you can see Tigby is here so Oyama is here and it is part of the urban center also but more uh, but relatively safer from uh, projected sea level rise so that would entail uh, that land use decision would entail costs, especially in terms of uh, outlay of new infrastructure and new structures, buildings for the municipal center, as well as benefits when it comes to amenity or relative location of land. Because if you move uh, munici the municipal center, uh, the development of population and activities would also be uh, influenced so here are some value measurement considerations so what are who views the value is important also the timing of the uh, uh, land use decision so uh, because now we have a 2030 projection that sea level rise will happen timing is of the essence in terms of uh, removing property from and people from uh, affected areas alternatives and effects are also important what is the alternative of leaving the municipal center in the uh, barangay tigbi when there is a hazard of sea level rise also risk and uncertainty is very applicable to climate change because uh, not all uh, projections are 100% certain so because of modeling constraints also an important factor when it comes to land use decisions is its impact on environmental quality the sustainability triangle which uh, considers economic environmental and social benefits and costs of actions is a good guiding principle for land use planners so the third factor in land use decisions is social factors so social factors are again uh, influenced by physical factors and they also in turn influence motives and of uh, stakeholders so 
Cerote uh, enumerates these following uh, examples of social factors that can affect land use decisions, the social values, customs, and traditions of the people and uh, government officials living there. So as an example, uh, because we are a rice-eating uh, country, we tend to plant rice in our agricultural land instead of uh, other less uh, water-intensive products. So also, ancestral domains are also a big uh, factor in land use decisions, especially uh, one example is that of the new Clark City. So in Tiwi, we also have, uh, as I will show you again in the land use map, uh, there are uh, there is an ancestral domain that is considered in the uh, zoning and planning of the municipality. Also, there are property ownership patterns. So our uh, owners of the uh, land uh, private or most of are this government because uh, if these are land banking uh, properties, it would be easier to just uh, reclassify or uh, convert these land uses into what the uh, government wants. So also government policies are important to be considerations. So um, there are factors like uh, the Urban Development Housing and Housing Act, uh, provisions on informal settlements and provisions on easements are important to be considered. So, even personal factors of uh, decision makers are also uh, factored into land use decisions. So, that's why it's a direct influence of the characteristics and motives of stakeholders. So, there are personal aspirations both for individuals and groups. There are general biases and prejudices. Uh, so political motivations are a very uh, large uh, consideration when it comes to land use decisions in our country. A uh, case would be the uh, territorial dispute between Makati City and Taguig City in the uh, possession of uh, Bonifacio Global City. And also timing is also important. Again, uh, our population will be doubling in uh, 28 years, uh, sorry, 38 years, according to one study. So it's important to note how uh, aware our uh, government officials and government planners are of these uh, timings. So in the case of TV, social uh, factor that can be considered is the municipal vision of the municipality so they want their uh, municipality to be a ceramics agroforestry geothermal industrial and ecotourism zone and pilgrimage destination so there are religious there are economic there are social and also there are a livelihood uh, considerations for planning the municipality so all boils down to the characteristics and motives of stakeholders the physical factors the social factors and the economic factors are filtered by the characteristics and motives of the stakeholders that are involved in making land use decisions so in our, the case of Tiwi, before we con, uh, we started the uh, comprehensive land use planning process, the municipal mayor presented to us his own vision. Uh, he envisions the development to, of the municipality to happen in four development zones. So the north being an agriculture agroforestry area, and then a secondary node, the south being a uh, agricultural basket or agricultural area the middle part being a uh, geothermal energy area because the uh, 
Aboitis is there, is located there. So one of the largest geothermal energy uh, generators in the in Asia, and also uh, the urban area is the central business district. So after consultations, workshops, and field-based activities, uh, this is the proposed uh, spatial strategy in uh, led, led by our land use planner, uh, Dr. Meliton Waniko. So he uh, for he proposes a bi-zonal and quadrizonal development that is uh, derived from the vision of the municipal mayor. So as you can see, uh, the nodal development was proposed by our land use planner, but the uh, zones of development from the vision of the mayor still uh, is considered. So as a result, the general land use plan is still uh, a result is a product still a product of the various stakeholders that are involved in the workshops and consultations so again these are the uh, core team this is the core team of the comprehensive land use planning process but uh, during workshops barangay officials and uh, IP leaders are also were also invited in the workshops so the geothermal corporation is here because they occupy 50 more than 50 percent of the municipal land area which can restrain or allow for uh, urban development so there are two types of stakeholders according to Professor Cerote and they can be distinguished according to their use of land, their guiding principles, their activities that the activities that they oppose and the activities that they support. So use value stakeholders use land as an environment for living and they want to have the optimum return of the land use decisions that they make so they also they oppose activities that reduce the adaptability of land for say agricultural area so they don't support uh, conversions as much as the exchange value stakeholders if these conversions or reclassifications are uh, re will result to uh, irreversible conversions or irreversible land uses so they support those that increase this land suitability so what are types of these activities so they can support uh, holding agricultural land as agricultural land instead of converting it into urban areas unless the commercial viability or commercial returns would greatly outweigh the costs of turning agricultural land into urban areas so exchange value stakeholders are they can be the main uh, distinguishing uh, feature uh, sorry characteristic is the that they want to obtain uh, a maximum amount of money for land so they want to increase the market value and one of the greatest uh, contributors to increase in market value is development and uh, density of activities in uh, an area especially industrial and commercial activities so can you give examples or can you think of examples for each type where do mayors come in are is one uh, group of stakeholders always use value or can they exchange or change roles so uh, as we end I want to uh, remind you that uh, the, the, the framework of uh, Professor Cerote shows that 
three factors, physical, economic, and social factors, are uh, filtered by the characteristics and motives of stakeholders before land use decisions are made. So, we can conclude and summarize this, this, is, uh, this class in that stakeholders are the final say and the final stage of land use decision making. You can have physically impractical land uses, you can have socially unacceptable land uses, you can have economically costly land uses, but if these uh, land use decisions are pro or uh, sorry against or for the general uh, characteristics and motives of stakeholders those land use decisions will happen regardless of the physical social and economic factors that can be considered so thank you for attending or listening to this uh, presentation and i hope you can you have learned something or many things that can be applied to your land use planning or urban planning exercises so if you have questions feel free to message me on my facebook page or send me an email or uh, visit my website enptinio.com thank you again